Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to YouTube. In today's episode, we are going to be examining uh, the market movements. Now, last time I came up with a video, we're looking at EURUSD and we're positioning ourselves long term. You know, how we're going to be looking at the market, and of course, how we're going to be trading from now up until the end of the year. And um, right after the market opened on Monday, and that was, um, you know, the first candle of the quarter and of course the first candle of the month the market tanked right from the high of around 1.1200 right now we are down 1.097 whatever so now the market tanked and of course what that is likely to do is that if you're a trader maybe you see that kind of scenario you are most likely going to be looking at it and thinking to yourself like oh wow just look at that drop look at what the market did uh, you know does that invalidate the analysis and does that you know what does that have to do with where we are positioned in the market but of course, one thing I'll tell you for sure is that all analysis stands sure. We are still positioned to the upside on EURUSD. And of course, that one analysis and of course, that one movement that came out in the market does not invalidate the setup that we have. Because institutions are still very much net long on EURUSD. Institutions are very much net long on EURUSD. And if they are net long on EURUSD, and of course, knowing fully well that we are sitting on a very, very major key level in the market, and of course, major key level. I'm talking about. I'm talking about higher time frame. I'm talking about yearly candles. You know, this is basically the support zone of yearly candles. So there's a very, very serious chance that we could see the market, you know, take off from that particular zone. So that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. And of course, right now the market has traded down. It has given us a very good opportunity to enter to the downside. And now we are going to be examining that. And just a moment, I'm going to jump into the charts. And I'm going to show you how I am positioning myself. And of course, the kind of criteria that I'm looking for to be able to take advantage and get long on Euro USD. And of course, if the market does otherwise and continues to trade to the downside, then we take the message from the market. And of course, begin to look to see what institutions are doing, how they're unloading the positions. And then we trade to the downside. But for me, for now, all bias still points to the upside. And of course, I'm not, uh, you know, that's exactly, you know, what we're going to be looking at going forward, right? So let's jump into the charts. And uh, I can't really can't wait to show you what we have in here. Okay. All right. So, all right. So on Euro USD, looking at the screen here very quickly, I want us to understand that we have a few things in game. Um, higher time frame. A higher time frame, you know, when we are taking off from a zone that looks like this, that's support and resistance. And even at that, we are caged between uh, two points. So we are caged between, if we also look at this area, we're going to have find out we have some support, some resistance up in that zone as well, as well. So also, you know, supporting the bearish bias as well. So there is a resistance here. And right beneath, there is support. So if we have those two things, if we have the market trapped in those two areas, how do we now define where we're going to go to? I want us to look back in time. And for us to look back in time, I like to go on really, really high time frame, on a really high time frame. And I want to show you this zone where we are sitting in price. So this is a zone that has produced multiple rallies in the past. Here it melted through, and then this was a test of that zone, became support, here, support, here, support. It melted through in 2022, and then ever since, we have stayed above this zone. And since we melted through, we've only had one, two, three, four, five. Five of the last six months' candle have been bullish right above this zone. So it goes a long way to tell you that there is something about this zone that institutions are interested in, and there is a very good chance that, yes, we could be seeing longs coming in from this zone. And of course, if we get down to the quarterly time frame, it's still the same thing. And now we have, we had 2024 was, this was first quarter, second quarter, and then the third quarter engulfs all the quarters. And right now we're pulling back to close some of these regions, to close some of these fair value gaps. And what I am seeing is ultimately that we are going, <clears throat> what I am seeing is ultimately that we are going to trade higher from this particular zone that we found ourselves right now. So when the market opened, you know, and you, you saw this aggressive trade to the downside, these are not things you see, and then you begin to panic. As a trader, you don't see these things and begin to panic. You see these things and you begin to, you, the idea of the institutions or what they're really trying to do is to shake you off your bias. And if you allow them to shake you off your bias, uh, well, that's really where the problem begins to come in. So I want us to understand something here. I want us to really pay attention to something here. You want to see that this is an impulse, this is a correction, and then this is another impulse that gave us a break in market structure. This market structure, of course, leaving this high behind, we did not liquidate this high from here. So it goes a long way to tell you institutions, whenever we see this type of failed highs, I do not like to get short. If this had taken this, I would probably have gotten short. 
but I do not like to get short when these highs are left behind. Why? Because easily, easily, the market could very easily fill this fair value gap and trade right back into these highs here on a monthly time frame. And then that's the kind of situation we find ourselves, you know, right now. This is exactly what I'm anticipating, you know, going further down the line. Of course, if we go down to weekly time frame, yes, we can say, all right, the market has traded down aggressively, broken through structure. And this in by itself could be one of two things. And how this works is, when we're looking at an uptrend, especially when we have this side of the market trending to the upside, when we're looking at an uptrend, this sweep here for us is nothing more than a liquidity run. This is a liquidity run in our books based on the way we look at it. This is a liquidity run. And of course, uh, we have criteria that we're going to use to qualify this to actually be able to get back long. But if you're a support and resistance trader, how are you going to approach this? Or if you trade the conventional way, however you choose to trade, this is it. This is it right here. You want to wait for the market to at least break right above this zone again, retest it, and this is where you get long. And when you get long, you need to understand that there is a plethora of opportunities to the upside. I mean, you have this high here, you have this high sitting here. So there's a very good, if you if you can hold that swing, there's a very good chance that you could actually hold all of these trades from here all the way to these highs. The moment you get above the zone and then retest that, there is plenty of trades for you to take from that zone. So this is how you're going to be trading this. Other than that, if the market, if the institutions decide to continue to sell short, I'm going to get over to the commitment of traders report in a minute. And of course, I'm going to show you um, that as well, how that works and what we are looking at over there. So what could happen is if we look at the daily time frame, if this is to serve as a break in market structure, even though in our books, this is a run on liquidity, then you want to wait for a market that at least gives you an optimal trade entry or at least trades to the 50% level. And then we have a fair value gap sitting at the 50% level where you could get short from. So you could get short from here and then to the downside. But the higher probability is something like this happening within the market. And the moment we go above that, there is a very good chance that we're going to continue to trade higher on the pair. All right. So I think well, that now being said, so with that being said, let's head over to the Commitment of Traders Report and let me show you how the institutions are positioning themselves or what, uh, how they are holding these assets, you know, based on the Commitment of Traders Report that we do have access to, all right? So looking at the Commitment of Traders reports on Euro here, I want you to see that at the end of the day, we are still net positive on the Euro. Even though we came all the way, remember we were at minus three, we were at, uh, plus, uh, we're at minus 9.5K and then we came all the way to plus 100K net positions. And then right now we are half that way from the peak at, you know, from the beginning of September, the institutions close around most of those profits. So now that they've closed most of those profits, in your mind, you might be thinking to yourself, all right, institutions are now going short or institutions are beginning to liquidate. No, they are still holding net positive positions. And most likely they are, you're going to see an increase in this. And what gives us a clue as to what could be an increase in this? If we come over to GBP and we see that we came all the way from minus uh plus 74k here we went up all the way to 108 and then we traded back down now we're at 93k can we see that towards the end of september institutions added 30,000 longs on the pound added 30,000 longs on the pound and added 6.4 k shorts and then added 6,000 longs again adding only six 629 um shorts here so this type of situation shows you that there is a very, very good chance that, yes, institutions could continue to hold this to the upside because a lot of these pairs, the pound, the dollar, the Aussie, the Kiwi, they all tend to move in the same direction. They, even though one might move before the other, but they all tend to move in the same direction in terms of positive correlation you know, to each other. So these are things you really want, really want to look at. So, of course, if we're looking at the euro, we still see that, yes, we are all green here, and we came all the way from minus 9K up to where we are right now, and there's a very good chance that institutions could continue to hold it long. But of course, by the time we get the commitment of traders for next week, we are going to see where they are positioned and all of that is going to help us, you know, make a very, very sound uh, judgment based on that. All right. So, I mean, I hope this has been very helpful to you. So, of course, let me quickly jump back to the charts and, you know, just, uh, you know, give you some final touches on the charts. All right. So getting right back here on the charts, I mean, uh, depending on how you look at this, if you're a support and resistance trader, you must also know that, yes, uh, you have landed on a very, very key support zone. You've landed on a very, very major support. This is previous resistance, most likely going to become support. And um, how you would want to look at this, you don't just want to jump in immediately. I mean, if you're a high risk trader, you can do that. But I want you to know that we are sitting right on a very, very key and crucial area 
on higher time frames, uh, we equally have this zone here on the weekly time frame. We have this zone here for you to, you know, use as a reference point. You want to see when the market goes right above that zone. This is um, me using support and resistance, you know, trying to explain this to you. So when the market goes right above these zones here, you have a very significant opportunity to be able to, you know, get long from there, knowing fully well that institutions are long, you've landed on this key area. And of course, we have untouched liquidity. We have an untapped liquidity at this zone. All of these are going to come together as a confluence for you to be able to actually, uh, you know, hold the trade for a longer term play. All right. So, I mean, however you choose to trade, this is not financial advice. However you choose to trade, I really wish you good luck and good trading. Of course. So now that was it. I really hope you found value uh, in this video, of course, looking at that analysis and of course, also looking at it from the commitment of traders report and looking at, you know, how institutions are positioning themselves long term on Euro USD. I hope this has helped you. So please give this video a like, please. And please, when you like this video, you are helping the channel, help the channel to grow. The like, the like button does us a huge favor. It tells the algorithm that we're doing a good job. The like is not just something that you just put there. The like tells the algorithm that we're doing a good job and it helps us put us in front of more people, helps more people see our content. So please like the video, leave a comment, engage. It's gonna, it's not gonna take much of your time. Even if it's just a like, just leave a like on the video and that really helps out the channel massively, all right? So please, um, if there's any if there's any suggestion, anything you would like us to look at, you know, going forward, please leave that in the comments and I'll be more than happy to actually examine that with you in the coming videos. Until then, trade safe. Of course, plan your trade and trade your plan. Cheers.